please may you turn off your mobile phones, thank you. is dedicated to Future Days, a film by Agnieszka Polska made in the summer of 2013 on the Swedish island of Gotland. The film depicts a phantasmagoric image of a heaven inhabited by dead artists, representatives of the 20th century, neo-avant-garde, bound together by a single attribute. They all, in some fashion, vanish from the art scene or discredited their own role as an artist. The artists in the film seem incapable of being creative. They are condemned to aimless wandering, to be dead is to be a dark tourist, exploring the city of the dead, stumbling against the remnants of neo avant-garde masterpieces built into the landscape, which disintegrate because of their earthly form. In some places, this heaven resembles a lumber room for works of art that have attained assumption. The artists are deprived of the main drive to once spare them on, a fear of death and oblivion. They come into contact with eternity. It is infinitely barren and stifles the need of creativity of any sort. Today, we're going to present the artists who appear in the film. We met them all in heaven and spent long years debating with them. Issues such as the need for a new language for art, artists' responsibilities towards the earthly society, or how art could look like in a state of eternity. Agnieszka Polska Hello. and Sebastian Chikoki will help us explain the threads present in the film. OK, let's start with Paul Tech. Uh, Paul Tech passed away in 1988. Uh, he was an outstanding American artist who made paintings, sculptures and installations and whose work created the basis for many trends visible in the art for the past 20 years. His most well-known works, such as technological reliquaries or the tomb, combine witty references to contemporaneous art movements, such as uh, pop art or minimalism, uh, with an interest in the Christian uh, cult of the reliquary. Uh, fascinated by the life after death, after his own death, he succumbed to uh, creative impotence. He no longer created any more works of art, killing time, uh, a gloomy joke that he repeated whenever possible, walking for months uh, at a time, doing physical exercises and losing himself in his thoughts. Hello, Paul. Can you say something? Hi. Well, it seems that during our lives we all, or at least those of us who are artists with uh, religious convictions, believe that the moment of death meant the ultimate encounter. We were all expecting it, but this condition remained unfulfilled. Crossing the boundary of death did not mean understanding the mysteries of the world. The yearning for metaphysics was not quenched, quite the contrary. The film Future Days captures this state of melancholy, excitement and unfulfillment that accompanies those wandering through the heavenly meadows in search of a solution. Future Days was filmed on the Swedish island of Gotland, the largest island in the Baltic Sea. Numerous archaeological digs have indicated that it has been inhabited since prehistoric times. For centuries it was a king settlement. In the Middle Ages, Gotland was also famed for being the home base of the Rufus Vitalian Brothers, a merchant's guild whose members had switched to piracy, hijacking ships they found at sea, plundering port towns and occupying them with their mercenaries. The brothers' battle cry was, God's friends and the whole world's enemies. In 1525, invaders from Lübeck 
Germany, who had been in conflict with the inhabitants of Gotland for centuries, came to the island and burned down all of the city's churches, apart from the cathedral. The ruins of the burned churches tower gloomily over the, cap over the city of Visby, the capital of Gotland, to this day. Gotland is the site of ruins, fossils, rocks and spectacular landscapes. Yeah, you should also know that uh, Gotland is primarily known uh, from a few films by uh, Ingvar Bergman uh, because the director lived uh, on a small Gotland Iso called Faro uh, until his dying days. Uh, his house is still there uh, as well as uh, his small private cinema. Uh, the island also served as a backdrop for uh, Andrzej Tarkovsky's film, a uh, messianic movie, The Sacrifice, uh, filmed in 1986. Uh, the film's protagonist is the, uh, the actor and writer Alexander, who realizes that the world is coming to an end that it will be destroyed, destroyed by an impending nuclear war. In his prayers, he promises God that he will sacrifice everything that is most important to him, his house, his family, his health, his career, if only the world was spared. He burns down his house and is taken to a mental hospital. In Tarkovsky's films, madness is a way of saving the world and uniting with a higher power. As mentioned before, uh, during their aimless wandering through heaven's meadows, the artists came across uh, abandoned artworks, uh, decaying due to a lack of conservation. The pa paper and earth trap which, into which Poltek falls uh, is based on a work by an Israeli artist, Avital Geva, uh, titled The Books in the Landscape Experiment, which was made in 1972. It was recently rediscovered by some curators exploring the beginnings of uh, land art uh, beyond the Western Europe and the United States. Geva work on the field uh, dividing the Arab village of uh, Meser from the Jewish kibbutz of Metzer, uh, founded by emigrants from Argentina. Uh, he dumped used books uh, into, into the ground for several months. In a short stretch of time, he, a time of mounds were, were, were formed uh, in various places. They were, those books, they were passed by the inhabitants of both villages every day on their way to work or visiting one another. The inhabitants dug through their books and took some home or scattered them about. The books spread uh, chaotically through the area. And they were blown away by, by the wind, uh, absorbing moisture at night and baking in the sun during the day. Paul, would you like to talk to us about the time you spent sitting in books? Yeah, there was a painful time for me. For obvious reasons, I don't have much to say. I have to admit that the situation was so unbelievable that at times it amused me. You had a great many books to read. Uh, yes, over the course of those years I taught myself Hebrew and Arabic through reading. I slowly began to forget how to speak English. Paul raises an interesting question in his statement concerning memory. Of course, memory undergoes a complete change in the context of eternity. Very often, the artists in the afterlife forget who they were during their earthbound lives. Sentences. There was a man of Peru. Never, never knew what he should do. So he told. So he told him of his head like a bird. And he like a bird. Into that intrinsic old man of Peru. 
There is more. Help me. Help here. Help here. Help. There is a sweating face. The night shadows created crossword puzzles. At one point, I no longer counted the days. The notion of a present, which is not a transition, but in which time stands still and has come to a stop. Jerzy Ludwinski passed away in 2000. He was a theorist, lecturer, art critic and an adherent of notional art, through which, instead of creating visual objects, artists were to simply write down texts on whose basis the pieces could be made concrete in one way or another. He declared the need to prepare for an entirely new form of art, which would be utterly non-material and would not require institutional support. He exercised his ability to telepathically transfer art after his death, encouraging his friends to take part as well. Ludwinski compared the development of art to a snowball rolling down a hill, always growing, collecting successive parts of reality to finally become the globe itself. He outlined the development of art in six phases. We are presently only in the fourth phase, the stage of meta-art, which is collecting all of reality. We still have before us the total phase, which will then take us to the zero phase art, which we will no longer be able to display in a conventional manner, at an exhibition, for example, and which can only be suggested. Members of the new civilization will communicate it through telepathy. Agnieszko, chciałbym, żebyś zapamiętała jedną rzecz z naszej wspólnej podróży. Bardzo prawdopodobne, że dzisiaj nie zajmujemy się już sztuką. Po prostu przegapiliśmy moment, kiedy przekształciła się ona w coś zupełnie innego. Coś, czego nie potrafimy już nazwać. Jest jednak rzeczą pewną, że to, czym zajmujemy się dzisiaj, posiada większe możliwości. The structure of future days, uh, the constant stumbling of, over the remains of works of art or perhaps not works of art at all, but rather their materials after effects, uh, recalls a classic uh, pseudo-touristic text by Robert Smithson, a uh, tour of the Pasaic in New Jersey, uh, which was published uh, in, for the first time in Art Forum magazine in 1967. Uh, the art is blundering through heaven or forever talking and thinking about art and the horizon of the new ultimately out of sight. Condemned to eternity, they can no longer dream of uh, originality or progress. Uh, as Bastian Ader once suggested, they are just uh, consumers of extreme comfort, just uh, endlessly staring into the past. The 
protagonists of the film have been transformed into practitioners, much like the case of the artist Rosemary Borowski, who became skilled in languages and exercises for the imagination, utterly abandoning the production of material artefacts. They are entirely fixated on artworks from the past, association, liter literally everything with art, a walk, a pile of rocks, a footpath, the sound of a radio, a wrecked car, etc. Moreover, everything is linked to everything. The map of the world becomes superimposed onto the map of art history. The last monument was a sandbox or a model desert. Under the dead light of the Passaic afternoon, the desert became a map of infinite disintegration and forgetfulness. This monument of minute particles blazed under a bleakly glowing sun and suggested the sullen dissolution of entire continents, the drying up of oceans. No longer were there green forests and high mountains. All that existed were millions of grains of sand, a vast deposit of bones and stones pulverized into dust. Every grain of sand was a metaphor that equaled timelessness. And to decipher such metaphors would take one through the false mirror of eternity. Uh, the spirit of uh, Robert Smithson uh, hovers over this film, if uh, such can be said about the uh, film about deceased artists. Uh, one scene uh, features uh, the entrance to a limestone mine, uh, which recalls a classic work of uh, Robert Smithson uh, called Partially Buried Woodshed. Uh, from 1970. Uh, this piece is located uh, 16 kilometers from uh, the town of Akron in Kent in Ohio. Uh, yeah, we can say that we were all very disoriented when we saw a place so similar to a partially buried woodshed. Uh, especially since we all knew that because of the ongoing erosion, uh, next to nothing remains out of this piece. Uh, for a moment we felt as though we really had found ourselves in some strange afterlife for art, along with the spirit of this poor, dilapidated woodshed. Yeah, but at the same time we were very pleased uh, because by chance we had been given a work that spoke of eternity and uh, in a very compelling way. And ever since it was built, uh, the physical shape of the shed uh, changed uh, or in fact ceased to exist as you can see in the, in the, in the image. Uh, we might assume that uh, it exists as as a concept, uh, but it, this would be entirely true either. Uh, its conceptual shape entirely changed uh, through the political events, uh, the massacre of the students on the campus grounds uh, in Kent uh, at the university in 1970. Uh, after this event, which uh, occurred very near to the woodshed, uh, it began to serve as a kind of monument to the to commemorate the victims of the massacre. Uh, an anonymous person wrote May for Kent on it, uh, thus changing the title of the work. As you can see, the shed uh, was reimagined on, on every possible level, uh, and yet there is a certain enduring, mysterious core to the work, uh, which demands we treat it as a kind of evolving creature. and one whose soul eventually went up to heaven. Charlotte Posensky passed away in 1985 was a German minimalist, sculptor and socialist. Posensky wanted her sculptures, most often resembling ventilation shafts, to be touched by the viewer and arranged in the spaces he or she saw fit. 
Disappointed by art's lack of impact on reality, she abandoned it for the social sciences in 1968. She spent the rest of her life working on employment and industrialisation. After her death, she returned to art, reconstructing her key works of the late 1960s out of organic materials. The artist said in an interview, My works change nothing and no one. In reality, which is one great big fossil, the act of making art is a double negation. I wondered for a long time if a project like this were at all necessary. To tell the truth, I'm still wondering to this day. From the outset, I was concerned that by bringing in wider contexts tied to the history of art, this work would never have the power of a clear-cut statement. On the other hand, I don't believe in creating unambiguous art. I'm aware of the fact that some knowledge is necessary for taking an art. Uh, this dilemma once caused you to abandon art altogether. My decision back then was mainly linked to the fact that being aware of these problems, I did not want to simply create political art. I didn't want to for various reasons. In general, I have no use for that kind of art. Uh, why did you finally agree to take part in the film? When Sebastian suggested I take part, I did not take his idea seriously. But in fact, the final decision was not mine to make. Mm, what do you mean? At one moment, the use of my image and thoughts ceased to be linked with you having my permission. Young artists can basically do as they please, often showing a superficial interpretation of a given figure. I don't see this as a negative phenomenon. I'm only afraid that my views will be very distorted by the filmmakers, which is why, after much consideration, I decided to take part in the project, and I also gave Agnieszka a few of my texts. Uh, do you agree with the thesis in the film you acted in? I do in part. I like the theme of the isolation in which the group functions. I think it does a fairly good job of rendering the phenomenon of the isolation of art, manifesting itself in the minor negligible impact that art has on its surroundings. I think that this group of people observing events on Earth from a distance through their relation with the newly arrived dead people and possessing a powerful urge to act but remaining mute in the face of the accumulating ruins could represent art as such. This unfortunate art which it is capable of surviving but is massively impotent in terms of its impact on society. But then, sadly, what difference does it make if such theses are formulated in the film, if the film itself is a perfect example of art that has no resonance in the society? The axis of future days is its contemplation of eternity the need to create things and ideas from a temporal realm that is in no way limited. In order to render the tragic inability to encompass this inhuman scale, at least to some degree, we would like to raise the issue of the storage of radioactive materials on the planet Earth. There is a great probability that uranium deposits will be exhausted in two or three hundred years, what remains as a side effect of nuclear power stations will still be lethally dangerous for the next several hundred thousand years. How can these deposits be marked so that, from a long-term perspective, the message remains legible? We presume that humanity, if it happens to survive for the next few thousand years, will not necessarily have a more advanced civilization. It is quite probable that, uh, owing to various sorts of catastrophes, uh, it could regress to a more primitive form of existence, such as of those of the Paleolithic period. Uh, we, have not, uh, we have no idea what, what languages will be in use in a few decades, or a few hundred years, or a few thousand years, or if writing as such uh, will exist at all.
uh, in Finland, a very advanced radioactive waste storage center has been built uh, 500 meters below the, below the earth. It will be closed and buried in about 100 years. The roads leading to it will be torn up and a dense forest will grow in its place. If in 10,000 years or so, another ice age visits this location, how can, it, can we assume that when the glacier retreats and a settlement returns, anyone will recall the, that radioactive waste was once deposited there? In places in New Mexico, where there are radioactive waste deposits, Signboards warn against digging until the year 12,000. We cannot be sure, however, that either the signboards themselves or the languages in which they are written will survive until that date. Nor can we be sure that, for example, the symbol of the skull and crossbones will be comprehensible to someone in a distant time. Now, let us give the floor to another protagonist of future days, Lee Lizano. Di Lozano, who passed away in 1999, was an American conceptual artist, also known as E. In the 1970s, she made a series of her famous pieces, which involved performing actions for a set period of time and noting the experiences that resulted. Her later works exclusively involved cutting back on certain spheres of activity in life, her boycott piece, for example, was based on avoiding conversation or forming any kind of relationship with women. This boycott continued till the end of her life. General strike piece involved cutting all ties with the art world. Lozano died forgotten in the home of her parents. After her death, she continued most of her actions began during, be, be, during her life. She continued to boycott the company of artists and women. Lee, how is it that you just vanish for so many years and suddenly appear on a film set among other artists and a film crew? You know, what is it like to be back at a party among people talking your ears off about art? Did you, did you feel at home with us? Like, uh, it didn't irritate you that we were always arguing? All right, uh, what do you think about the fact that this film will end up in a museum collection, maybe here in Nottingham or somewhere, the, there won't be any more control over it? Like. Aren't you, or aren't you concerned with the fact that you will be remembered as a kind of gothic kind of figure, this gloomy person? We are very sorry. Apparently, Lee is not in a good mood today. Let's give the last word to Jetsy. Okay. A work of art loses its formal, spatial and temporal structure and no longer conforms to any previously drawn limits. The work of art can appear everywhere and embrace anything and everything. It becomes concrete only in the viewer's imagination. What matters are the tensions created by the collective effort 
of many individuals, which contributes to the making of one system pulsating with its one life, like some gigantic work of nature. Nie, ja pamiętam, tu zaraz będzie taki brzozowy las. E, a gdzie jest stary dom? Nie wiesz, ja też nie wiem.
Um, from Nottingham Contemporary, can we just say a very big thank you to artist Agnieszka Polska and her collaborator Sebastian Tuchocki from uh, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Warsaw. Um, a very big thank you and well done to our three brilliant actors, uh, Curtis, Cameron and Abigail. And I think with that performance you'll see lots more of them, so yeah, another round of applause. And uh, thank you all very much for coming. I hope you enjoy this evening's performance. <laughs>